Good morning everybody. As you can see, I'm here in the auditorium in Building 4. However, nobody else is. Well, that's because we're in our second week of online learning and working off-site. Seems to be going okay. Um, there's still some hiccups that we've had, but we're learning um, about this and I'm sure in a few weeks we'll all be a bit better in dealing with this situation. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all, whether you're professional staff, academics, doctors, nurses, certain red-haired pharmacists or physiotherapists or students. I'm heartened by all of us pulling together and navigating the storm and I would like to thank you all for your resilience, for your energy, for your passion and, and for the feedback particularly because as I said we're not getting it right yet but we will hopefully soon. This is not an easy time a lot of uncertainties and we're all faced with endless news, changes of regulations. Um, those of you who are away from their families must be worried um, how they're going and they are equally worried about you. My family is in isolation as well when I'm away from them so I've got a bit of a feeling of how this might look to you. Can I please just urge you, if you're troubled, reach out to somebody. There is somebody that you can talk to. Text, use social media and vice versa, those of you who have access to the phone or um, social media, please reach out to others. Send them a text, a funny meme, a little video, anything to cheer us up. We have the opportunity to stay in contact, even though we're not in physical contact. Okay. COVID-19 is changing our lives and the sense of normality has gone. Please take care of yourselves and of others. I'm aware that the biggest challenge for us is communication. Communication is difficult and we're using all kinds of means to reach out to you so we can explain why we're doing certain things and what we're doing. If you have any questions, please email us um, and uh, we will answer your questions. And if you have any suggestions on what to do better, please also let us know. We are officially in the activation phase of the business contingency plan for Operation Graduate. For our team, this means that we've completed our alert phase tasks and we're working towards another set of tasks to keep the medical school running. These contingencies include maintaining ongoing communications with staff, students, internal and external partners, maintaining a log of student and staff absences and presences, establishing an alternative admissions process, providing staff student support, conducting formal staff student assessment, initiating IT and web page services supports, closing buildings and facilities, and establishing our email address which is operationgraduate.medicalschool at anu.edu.au. We've already completed most of these tasks or we're working towards achieving them and we're aiming to maintain business continuity in an environment that is exceptionally unusual for us and for the students. The Year 1s will have their formative assessment next week and I know that there are a lot of questions from the Year 1s and a little bit of concern. Don't be concerned. This is a formative assessment. It does not count towards your end grade. It is really a checkpoint for your learning. It's online and it will be time limited. You will get the results and the model answers and for those of you who haven't done so well, we will give you feedback and help you do better in the future. If you're considering program leave, please contact your year coordinator. Send me an email and we will talk about your program leave and how we can make that happen. We understand that this might be the best for you and your family and you will not use, lose your place in the medical school if you take program leave next, this year. Please contact ANU Admissions to get more information if you are on a visa um, and about the fee requirements and reimbursement of fees. Your health, your well-being and that of your family is very important to us. So please talk to us so we can work together to make this situation work as best as it can for you. Here's an update on the ANU residences. I spoke to the director of the residences just a few days ago and she assured me that the residences will stay open for as long as possible. I have asked all phase two students to please let me know if you live in the residences because we don't seem to be having accurate numbers. Um, if you're away from the residences and you want to come back, you're more than welcome to do so, but you need to, as everybody in the residences, adhere to the rules that the residences have put up um, around social distancing. Should there be a student with COVID-19 in the residences, then this will be managed by the Public Health Department. 
For those clinicians who have an ACT Gov computer and you've received invitations for a Zoom meeting or you wish to set up a Zoom teaching session, you would have found that that's not possible. Uh, Zoom is not downloadable on ACT Gov computers and depending on what version of Windows you have on the ACT Gov computer, you may not even be able to log into a meeting. I have discussed that with the Chief Information Officer who is aware of our need and of the urgency of fixing this and has assured me that shared services will work on this next week. But as you can imagine, they're a bit overwhelmed with other requests at the moment as well. An update on teaching and learning. Phase one is completely online and they seem to be doing okay. The TELP team is working with acad academics, so they shorten their online videos or ses sessions that they have um, and make them into small chunks, a little bit easier to digest for the students. Phase two uh, also has most lectures and some of the um, teaching material available on uh, Wattle. Uh, the website, Medopedia, is up and running. Um, this is a site that is used to replace the student's clinical experience. So it's really used as a case-based learning where patient conditions, swollen abdomen, edema, whatever not, can be posted and dis uh, the students can discuss what their next steps in terms of investigation, physical assessment, diagnostics and so on would be. It's not a repository for all kinds of learning material. Uh, this is monitored um, and we're still looking for some clinicians to help us monitor the site. The students remain on a pause for clinical placement and I'm working closely with Canberra Health Services and Calvary and of course the rural nodes as well as the GPs um, on their return. You may imagine that there is a lot of uncertainty out there about how busy the hospitals will be and what the risk for students and for patients are um, but we are moving forward on finding a conclusion on this very soon. Dr Nick Taylor, the Associate Dean for Phase 2, is working very hard on a program to ease the students' return into Phase 2 and hopefully we'll have more on that um, next week. We are also in discussion with Canberra Health Services and Calvary, um, similar to what New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland and Western Australia are doing and thinking about employing the fourth year students, possibly as medical assistants, to help out with a possible shortage of works, work staff in uh, Canberra. Um, these negotiations are ongoing um, and I will update you as soon as I know more. The college has developed a crisis seat funding scheme that you all should be aware of. The deadline for the first round is two o'clock today. And those of you who have missed out, please don't be too upset because there will possibly be a second round for funding. Uh, the competition will be extreme. Uh, we only fund up to $50,000 per school and possibly only per project. Um, so please send in your applications if you have them to Kirsty Douglas. And if you've missed out on this round, wait and there will be an annunciation of the second round. An announcement rather, sorry. If you have any questions, please email them to me for the students. Um, they've developed an online platform for questions which can centralise these questions so I get them um, and we will develop a um, frequently asked questions form for you which we will post on the intranet. Otherwise, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact your year coordinators, the associate deans, your academic supervisors or me. So this was it from me for this week. I hope you found this information informative. Please stay safe. We all have a responsibility. We can tackle this together. COVID does not discriminate and we can change the situation together. Look after yourself, look after your family and your friends and I shall see you next week. Thank you.